There seemed to be a lot of issues with the last question on your written assignment this week, so I wanted to uh, talk through this problem real quick. Um, there were less issues with part A, but I thought I might as well go through the whole thing here. So in part A, um, first of all, you're given a transformation from uh, the collection of uh, polynomials, degree two or less, to the set of all two-dimensional vectors with real entries here. And uh, the way that these polynomials are transformed into a vector in R2 is according to this setup here. So the first entry is going to be the value of that polynomial at 1. The second entry is going to be the value of the derivative at 2. Uh, in part A, so we're given a specific polynomial and asked to find t of this t squared minus 3t plus 7 polynomial. Uh, and so what you should do there is well, we want to find these entries, p of 1, we just substitute 1 into the given polynomial. So 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 7 will give us 1 minus 3, so negative 2 plus 7, so 5. And then we would need to find p prime of 2. So I could start out just finding the derivative, p prime of t would be 2t minus 3, just differentiating this function up here, and then substitute 2. So this is 2 times 2 minus 3, 4 minus 3, so 1, which tells me that t of this polynomial is equal to p of 1, which is 5, and then p prime of 2, which is 1. So this will be uh, your answer to part A. Now, in part two, you're asked to find a basis uh, or, or a polynomial that spans uh, the kernel, the kernel of this transformation T, which the kernel of a transformation is the, the set of all polynomials such that T of P is equal to the zero vector. So this would be the set, so it's a set of all um, polynomials P that are mapped to the zero vector, so in this case 0, 0, which would mean that uh, P of 1 is equal to 0 and P prime of 2 is equal to 0. Uh, so if we start out with just a generic uh, polynomial in P2, so just some generic second degree polynomial, we could write it as AT squared plus bt plus c. And we're not sure what any of those coefficients are equal to at this point. Uh, well, we need p of 1 to equal 0. So p of 1, if we just substitute 1, would be a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And we want this to equal 0. Also, we want p prime of 2 to equal 0. So first of all, p prime would be 2a t to the first plus b times derivative of t is 1 and then the derivative of the constant c is 0. So this is p prime of t then p prime of 2 is 2a times 2 plus b so 4a plus b would need to also equal 0. So sticking with that equation, this tells us that b would need to equal negative 4a. If this polynomial p is in the kernel, then b needs to equal negative 4a. Well, going back up to this equation here, let me see if I can, okay. Yeah, going up to this a plus b plus c uh, equals zero equation and now substituting, we have oops, a plus b is negative 4a plus c equals 0. So negative 3a plus c equals 0. So c is equal to 3a. So we know this. We know this. So going back to our uh, generic polynomial here and substituting what we know, b is equal to negative 4a, c is equal to 3a, I can write this polynomial 
so our polynomial in the kernel as, uh, let's see, so a t squared b is equal to oops, negative 4a times t to the first, c is equal to 3a. Okay, and so I could factor out a from that whole thing. So this would be a times t squared minus 4t plus 3. And this is where a can be any number. a is, is our free variable in this case. a is any, um, any real number. And then uh, a times t squared minus 4t plus 3 would be a polynomial in the kernel of t. So that's the set of all linear combinations of that one polynomial there. So the kernel of t is equal to the span of this polynomial right here t squared minus 4t plus 3. So this is our polynomial that spans the kernel of uh, this transformation t. This is the answer to problem uh, 5b.